top 10 Billboard chart topping rock songs of the 50s. Yeah, we're doing this series right now with, um, you know, uh, counting down the best songs of a particular decade. And we're doing, well, all of the decades, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s and all time. Uh, so all of those combined would be uh, eight. So I'm gonna, well, I have a whole week to fill by that, so there we go. Or I can fill up a whole week with that, so there we go. So we're gonna do uh, 50s and 2010s, hopefully in one sitting. So uh, what's gonna be on the list? Um, Tutti Fruity, I think that is a big one. Uh, Terminal, of course, JLS Rock. Can, you know, cannot uh, not include Elvis Presley, so there we go. Yeah, I'm really not that big on the 50s, honestly. I really, I really like pretty much everything after this, but the 50s well and the late, you know, the 21st century. I'm not really too wild about either, so. I can't really think of anything, really. I'm really not, <coughs> not that big on the 50s. Um, maybe a Chuck Berry song? I think that's from the 50s, or maybe that's even from the 40s. I don't, I don't think so, but. Maybe. Um, yeah, so something like that. Maybe. The stupid ass ads. Luckily, I. Um, what's the thing? I muted it already, so there we go. Oh. I have to unmute it. Well, we always had a lot of fun with this one. Um, and Presley. Rock and roll. That's Rob Goldwyn Mayer, aka the, the guys that made up, um, I, I believe they own Goldeneye, we'll be counting down our I think, for the yeah, top 10 Billboard I think, rock songs of the 1950s. I don't know anything else they own though, so. Uh, it's alright. It's kind of like a boy band, but you know, not as bad, I guess. I'm just really not that big on all of these acts, you know, because uh, there were acts before the Beatles, of course, and they were just really like appalling, really, well, not per se appalling, but. They were just, um, you know, mediocre, kind of like commercial rock, kind of like, well, commercial pop in a way. They were just kind of generic, they were bland bands, honestly. And the Beatles just kind of changed that and actually made music important for music, so there we go. Now known as the Billboard Hot 100 did not exist for the majority of the 50s. So for the purposes of this list, we're only considering those rock songs that topped either the top 100, the best sellers in stores, or after August 1958, the Hot 100. Mm -hmm. Or after August 1958, the Hot 100. This song, on, I know that a lot of people love this song, Great Balls of Fire, but Great Balls of Fire by. Um, Jared Lee Lewis, but I honestly do not like this song. I just think the the lyrical content is cringy, the vocals by Jared Lee Lewis are cringy as hell, you know, when he says, So good! It just makes me cringe, honestly. The Great Balls of Fire is one of the best selling singles of all time. Okay. It only topped the country chart in the US, mm -hmm. and therefore it will not be making our list. Oh, I think that is cringy, but when he says, oh, so good, it's just, you know, he tops his own cringy shit, you know, that's, that's kind of uh, inspiring, honestly. And it did inspire a lot of shitty action. I mean, I mean just look at the pop charts. Uh, boy band. Probably my favorite boy, you know, boy band, as in this kind of stuff, is, um, the Temptations. They have really great harmonies, but outside of them, I don't really like anything from that particular thing. Jesus Christ, White Boys and Nation. It's a rock and roll duo classic and our number 10 pick. I mean, I've seen you some uh, pill looking boys, but Jesus Christ, these boys are white. 
of the 1950s, and thanks to its fast tempo... Not trying to be racist here, but, uh... Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm already looking at the 60s and the 70s, and I just look like, can I click on you guys instead? You know, Jim Morrison and uh, Paul McCartney, like, can I click on you guys, maybe? Fuck me. I have to watch this shit. I mean, music starts out kind of shitty like this. It's really just went amazing after that, and then it just kind of plummeted down in the, in the 21st century. That is basically my opinion on music. Um, and don't get me wrong, the the era between 60s and 90s isn't perfect either because you have some terrible songs in the 80s, some really like hair metal, like some cheesy ass shit. And um, well, what else do you have? Well, you just have a lot of shit. Well, and a lot of like late 90s new metal post grunge shit, you know? It's terrible. I don't know even there, so. Well, probably, I think it's, it's not per se better, but it's more fun to watch because, you know, some acts in the 80s or 90s are so bad, or even after that, they're so bad that you can kind of talk smack about them, so you have something to say. With this stuff, I'm just like, yeah, this is like 50 dated garbage, so I cannot really say anything there. It's all the same, kind of. Uh, well, it's not all garbage, but this sounds pleasant and nice, I guess. Number nine, Sleepwalk, Santo and Johnny. Probably because it was released in the late 50s, so I'm like, it's almost psychedelic 60s stuff, but not yet, you know, it's not, it's not exactly there yet. But it is close, you know, it kind of sounds like, um, like Beach Boys, but, but with actual thoughts. <laughs> I'm gonna get a lot of shit for that, because I know a lot of people love the Beach Boys, but I just do not care about them, honestly. A rare instrumental hit on the Billboard Hot 100, this 1959 track was written by brothers Santo and Johnny Farina. I just think if it sounds a bit more, uh, you know, gritty, like a bit more, um, maybe a bit more serious and a less, you know, less Beach Boy-ish. I think it could have been a lot better, honestly, because it just sounds like a Beach Boys knockoff band, honestly. At two in the morning. And the Beach Boys aren't really that good in my opinion, so. Featuring some killer slide guitar and a bass line that is as dreamy as dreams themselves, Sleepwalk is an early precursor to the surf rock genre, as well as a timeless classic that just never gets old. Surf rock. Well, that never caught on too, didn't it? Covered by artists old and Fuck new, no. there's no denying the influence that Sleepwalk has had. Meant to say did it again, but uh, as well, well as I'm as never gonna get that right, honestly. Had on the music industry. It's just so boring to me, honestly. It's like you know, what most say, oh, it's like dreamy music. Yeah, it's put me, it's puts me to sleep, literally. Like just move on. Oh, what is this? Number eight, round and round. Barry Como. I mean, is Frank Sinatra 50s? No, I think he's 40s. Oh, but if he, well, is Frank Sinatra rock though? What the fuck is Frank Sinatra? Um, kind of like a Bob Jazz singer maybe? I don't know. Perry Como created a pop inspired phenomenon. I have no clue. Pop rock? No clue. But uh, Frank Sinatra should be on here though. Because rock is kind of a wide term to use though. Written by songwriters Joe Shapiro and Lou Stallman, Round and Round proved to be Como's last Billboard number one. Yeah, of course it isn't written by Como. It was certainly one of his best. While it only lasted a week at number one on the bestsellers in stores list, it is certainly a highlight in a decade full of hit songs and multi-talented artists. <sighs> I 
Uh, just end, please. What the fuck? What the fuck even was that? He was standing like, um, you know, some fucking machine where you check your eyes or something. I think it was that, but why have they in a music video? Uh, what is this? Yeah, Elvis Presley, of course, but what song? Seven. Yeah, there we go. Heartbreak Hotel. I couldn't, uh, you know, the only songs I actually know, man, are uh, Jailhouse Rock. <coughs> Uh, and Blue Suede Shoes. I think those are the only two songs that actually, you know, are actually do remember. Elvis Presley. Uh, what else? What else is on there? Um, Can't Stop Falling in Love. Uh, yeah, I believe this is an Elvis tune. That song is kind of cheesy, but it's good cheese. Okay. The songwriting? No. But it doesn't matter. Elvis Presley is like one of the biggest and acclaimed artists ever. Although, I'm pretty sure he never wrote it a tune himself. Really rarely though, so... And I know a lot of people that are probably are coming at me like, it doesn't matter if he is a good songwriter or not. He had the tunes, he had the attitude, he had the looks, he had everything, you know? But, uh, you know, I think that Elvis Presley is honestly one of the most overrated uh, artists ever because <clears throat> um, whenever he was famous, you know, he had good tunes, but they were just kind of like One Direction-ish, you know, you know, uh, One Direction, the solo group, I guess, solo now. It was good, but it was, well, One Direction isn't acclaimed, but it was kind of similar to that, you know, it uh, pleased a lot of girls, it made them gassy, well, not say gassy, but, like, it made them gasm, in that sense. Um, it was just a very, you know, um, yeah, kind of commercial era for music. Well, especially now, but then you actually had to get out of your way and actually buy it, so there we go. I do like this guy with the, uh, how do you say it, the bass? Not like a, not like a, not like that bass, but like a big ass bass. The, the cello. Inspired by <coughs> I do like that though. From a suicide note reading, I Walk a Lonely Street, Heartbreak Hotel mm. eventually inspired a young George Harrison to audition for the Beatles and left a lasting imprint on another young boy that would eventually front Led Zeppelin. Oh well. I mean, Zeppelin basically covered Elvis Presley and all of those blokes in the early days of their career, but <clears throat> I mean, they're way better though. You know, they took that and they made it good. <laughs> well, it is good music, but they made it better. I never really got uh, Elvis's look though, honestly. You know, people that say, oh, Elvis is beautiful and have my babies, but I honestly don't think he's really that sexy, honestly. <clears throat> you know, if I, I would be a girl, I would way more prefer, well, these guys on the thumbnail, you know, Jim Morrison and uh, late Paul McCartney, you know, not that pussy shit, but. The late blooming Paul McCartney, you know, those are, I think, way better looking guys than uh, Elvis, honestly. Because they were actually rocking, you know, Elvis was kind of like more of a poppy kind of like, um, how is it, one show called it? Or not per se show, but that uh, Grease, you know, kind of like a Grease looking guy. All I have to do is dream. The Everly Brothers. Dream, dream. Honestly, it's, this song kind of makes my skin crawl, honestly, so I fucking hate it. It's basically because it's just kind of like cringy uh, family harmonizing, you know, you know not, that, not, that, um, not that family matters in that, in that uh, perspective, but it's just like, get on with it, you know what I mean? Well, according to the Billboard charts of 1958, <coughs> nobody... As all I have to do is dream. Reach well, well, I don't like it. Well, I don't hate it, but it doesn't make my skin crawl, though. Yeah. I don't know. There are elements that I understand 
what people like it but for me it's basically a poor man's yesterday that's 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 all that it is honestly They look constipated to me. Those fucking eyes. Stephen Colbert and Elvis Costello. Of course Elvis Costello has to do something like that. I guess people play guitars like that, but who plays a guitar with a stone, honestly? Who does that? Probably a lot of people because yeah, you know, I get criticized. Oh, ominous, you don't play it, you don't play an instrument, so don't neck about it, don't whine about it. But I mean, I, I have opinions. Shut up. I can say what I want. Uh oh, do we do the 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 body holly? Uh. <coughs> Wait. Isn't this Buddy Holly? Maybe that is Buddy Holly and he plays in the crickets? I think it is that, but. Inspired by the John Wayne film The Searchers, Buddy <coughs> Holly and his band collectively wrote a love yeah, song about a man's cynical take on his girl's threats. I don't know why the crickets, the, the crickets aren't, you know, on the list of uh the greatest artist of all time because only Buddy Holly was inducted of a uh, Rolling Stones list. <coughs> so so I was like, wait, what? You know, you know, um, the crickets aren't included. Well, I didn't know that then because who the fuck are the crickets? But I do know Buddy Holly. However, due to the lead singer's existing record contract, the crickets were ultimately given the performing credit for the next year and a what? half. Buddy Holly emerges as a transformative I kind of miss something, but I just don't give a shit to, to watch it back. ...star the 1959 plane crash that took his life, but his legacy yeah. endures, as that'll be the day became the first recording of four lovable lads from Liverpool known as the Quarrymen, otherwise known as the Beatles. And the Quarrymen, that, that's interesting. Yeah, that is Paul McCartney right there. Yeah, that sounds way better than the crickets, honestly. But I mean, it's the fucking Beatles, so of course it's better. Yeah, another, uh, another, <laughs> said it in a kind of Spanish tone. It was not even my intention, really. Um, Jailhouse Rock by Elvis, of course. Number four, Jailhouse Rock, Elvis Presley. Um, by the way, I I've made multiple videos criticizing Elvis Presley. I don't hate Elvis Presley, I like Elvis Presley, but I just think he's one of the most, he's, he is probably the most overrated artist ever. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, he is, <coughs> according to Rolling Stone, he is the third best artist of all time. And he, well, for most of the time, he didn't even write a song. I mean, the people, the two people that are above him, or the two ex, are way more talented they their careers lasted longer or well not per se, well not per se but kind of the songs stand the test of time the albums stand the test of time they're great songwriters um not per se more iconic but they're just way better band and they had the fame and it's just way better <laughs> plain simple you know bob dylan and the beatles like fucking hell In fact, America was so overwhelmed by Presley's dynamic performance that most didn't recognize the overt over a Yeah, I actually said, you know, like, uh, well, should I get into the. Well, no, you guys don't give a shit. <laughs> I, can, I can share the story, but you guys probably don't give a shit. Rock, rock. This video is so cheesy. I mean, the bars aren't even locked. They're just standing there like, oh yeah, we are behind some fucking steel nets or something. Like, 
They're not even locked in. Fuck sake. They're not, they're not even standing, uh, you know, back of it because you cannot see the dancer then. Uh, number two. Number three, tequila. The Wait, is Elf Freddy gonna be on this list like three times? I mean, I know that 50s music is underdeveloped as fuck, but I mean, come on now. I mean, I'd rather have like 10 Elvis tunes than some of these fucking blokes' music, like fucking hell. Like that's a Beast Boys knockoff song. I'd, I'd rather have Elvis Presley though. Tequila the Champs. Oh, this song. Did it, did it, did it. Yeah, that song. Nobody knows the band, everyone knows the song. Completely lose their mind any time a rock song references alcohol. And in 1958, this track made a nation of rebels without a cause to get down to a sexy mambo beat. Oh, you mentioned a shitty drink. Oh my god, controversial. Who fucking cares? I mean, you could have looked, you could, you could have looked the wrong way at that person and you would have made headlines. That's how, that's how much of fucking pussy the 50s were. ...about the musical history of the champs today, but their song has long been a staple of American pop culture and dive bar jukeboxes. I mean, say what you want to say about the 50s, but at least, you know, pretty much every act, if not all of them, actually played instruments or instruments were involved, because that was the way to go. That was, you know, the only thing you got. And the best thing in that regard, but not only topping the pop chart, it's optional now, which is just like fucking hell. As well. There are some acts that you know don't use instrument and actually are great musicians, you know, the Chemical Brothers, uh, Prodigy, Death Punk, Dead Mouse. You know, there are some good acts out there, but honestly, you know, for one or two good acts, you get like. Oh, uh, 100 shitty knockoffs, so it's not worth it, honestly. It's not worth it. This sounds like a Beach Boys knockoff too, really. Did, did the Beach Boys release something in, 19, in, in the 50s? I think so, I think they started out in the 50s, so... Maybe? This one's called Rock Around the Clock. Oh, this song, fuck me. I hate it when Watch Mojo in the clip they already mentioned the song and then Watch Mojo mentions it again like Hey, are you fucking retarded? My like, Jesus Christ man. Number two, rock around the clock. Oh thank you for informing that again. Haley and his comments. I didn't hear I didn't hear it before. Can you mention it again? Thank you, Watch Mojo. MVPs, MVPs. Dipshit. Uh, honestly, this is probably the best song I can describe the whole 50s with. It's defining, it's sketchy, it's hooky, it's, you know, melodic. It has all of those things and I hate it because it is dated, it is easy, it is... I don't hate easy per se, but I don't like this kind of easy, you know. It is not really sexy, honestly. You know, I don't really like sexy all the time, but... It just doesn't do it for me, honestly. Um, it's generic. It's you know, it's forgettable. It's forgettable in my opinion. I know a lot of people that rock around the clock like like every fucking day, but I just you know, I get off this video and I forget it instantly. Like, oh, this existed. Like that. That's that's the fifties for me. It has good elements, but for every good element, you got a shitty element. You know, backfiring. So. I think this song defines the 50s honestly. It is it has good elements, but I just do not like it. The 50s. Perfect. What is this video? Like this girl chewing on gum, like who wants to fucking see this? What is this guy doing? There's like one guy, I believe, playing a cello or a or big ass guitar. Jesus Christ. I think this is bigger than, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, but there's just one guy next to it. He's not holding it. He's not doing. He's just going like this. 
he just goes like that and he looks like you know he's doing his business there and i just do not know what he's doing like jesus fucking christ what are you doing oh he's playing piano yeah there we go he's playing piano i just wanted to say what are you doing man but he was playing uh, piano there we go <coughs> still shit though <laughs> All that haircut. Now he, I want to say he looks like somebody, but I believe that this is a Dutch property, so you guys know jack shit about that. This is where we normally have honorable mentions. But the 50s are so bad that we don't have honorable mentions, so let's just get Elvis again and get it over with. But there aren't any this time around. So on to our top pick. Why aren't there any around though? Because they're not saying that because it was shit. They're filtering themselves. Well, here you go. Number one, Hound Dog, Elvis Presley. Pretty much the best thing that you got out of the 50s. And it is pretty much because of this moment right here. Hound Dog, Elvis Not here. <coughs> here. I wanted to drum, but I was a bit off. Well, let's do it. I mean, that is rock and roll right there. That is a great uh, drum fill. Especially for the 50s. I'm not, I'm not following anything that this guy is saying, but that was a great uh, drum fill, especially for the 50s. Would never quite reach the same success again. The combo known as no. Leaper and Stoller went on to write numerous chart toppers for the I mean, those moves, the, that instrumentation, that drum fill, it's, it is a fantastic song. That momentum, that swagger of Elvis Presley, that slow down moment, it is a fantastic song. I mean, if I see shows like this, I know, I know why Elvis Presley is so highly rated, but he is a rate though. But that doesn't take anything away of the quality of Hondo, because it is a rocking song. Especially for a, a pop artist out of the 50s, this is pretty much heavy metal for the time. what a young generation of Americans were experiencing. Individual freedom. I just lost the drums from the strike. Generations upon generations would later alter rock music to reflect their own reality. And it all began with this Elvis classic. I mean, people who censor Elvis's legs, I'm just like, Jesus, are you fucking sad? So, fucking pussies. Do you agree with our selections? What is your favorite chart? I mean, that hose was dancing like Elvis, so you should cut him off too. Fucking the the more mind -blow top 10 from what the fuck was that? Day, be sure to subscribe to watch Mojo. Somebody groping Elvis. I mean, I think that every uh, woman in that position would do the same, so cannot blame Yoni. I feel now, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I mean, Elvis, he isn't called a king for nothing. Um, I mean, I do like him, so. No, I mean, he is pretty much the best thing out of the 50s, so there we go. Little Richard, Chuck Berry, Eric Cochran, Dion and the Bell. Yeah, I believe that all of these acts didn't make it because, um, well, <coughs> um, fucking no. Why? You know, because uh, Billboard chart topping, they have to have to top the charts. And if you want to top, top the chart, then you have to do something like major. Uh, which is kind of surprising, honestly, because a later act um, in, in the 90s, well, you can pretty much guess it already, but they were pretty much the biggest band ever, really, up until that point, but, and, F, you know, ever was, so, and even their biggest song, which every fucking bloke on the planet knows, even that song wasn't number one for some reason. Probably because it was an actual ballsy song, so that's the reason why, probably. This is the widest goddamn list. Great music, but Jesus. No Little Richard, Chuck Berry, Levin Baker, Ray Charles. 
coming from a black man. Um, yeah, honestly, those guys could have. Um, I'm actually surprised that Chuck Berry and Ray Charles didn't make it really. Little Richard, for that matter, uh, I don't know Levy Baker, so I can't really comment on that. I'm honestly kind of running out of air, and this video is actually being 30 minutes right now. That's actually pretty impressive. So it's probably a really fun video then. So, really. I was born too late in this world. This is the best music of all time. It's, it is kind of dated, but it is way better than what is on now. So, sure. Well, most of it at least. I know most of these songs because I played Mafia too. Yeah, I believe um, the Mafia games. And uh, for sure the Fallout games have some great like retro tunes like uh, the 50s and the 60s. Hopefully, uh, well no no no, the 40s and the 50s. Which are kind of like the my two least favorite uh, genres but they're still pretty good. Well my two genres, my two least, least favorite eras are probably yeah just the 2000s in general, you know 2020s. Well, musical list where artists can be used more than once, does Elvis. Wait, what? Um, yeah, yeah, but that is mainly because the 50s were just kind of bad, honestly. Top 5. That'll be the day. What, what are you on about? TL number one. Hound dog. Elvis Press. Those are your two favorites? You can just type them out, I guess, but sure. Top the 60s watch money? Well, they already did that, so. Well, probably at that time they wanted it to, to be released, but they're working on it, damn it. I mean, if there's gonna be a 50s list, then of course it's gonna follow the rest, because, I mean, it's watch mojo, come on now. I mean, but I have no time anymore, so I'm gonna end this video, like, subscribe, and all this good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the future. This video is fucking long, and I'm gonna drink something now, because I'm tired. Ugh.